Have you ever had a friend who just completely vanished from the world around them? A person who just didn't show up anymore? A person who disconnected completely from Facebook and from social media? A person who just vanished, who seemed to no longer respond to any messages or calls? A person who just wasn't there anymore? Have you ever been a person who just felt you needed to get away from everything? A person who just wanted to leave, to just be alone, to just get away from society and from teachers and friends and family members and people who are trying to push themselves on you all the time? Have you ever felt that you needed to get away in order to reconnect with yourself and to find out who you truly are? Today we're talking about the INFP personality type and the INFP is one of the 16 personalities. One of the types most known for introversion, intuition, feeling and perceiving. INFPs, they are people that question and test the self and your own values and feelings in order to get to know themselves. INFPs seek to become individuals with insight and strong values that can be used to resolve problems that exist around you at work and with family and friends and people and struggles that you have. INFPs are people that seek to avoid control and judgment and retribution from the system and society around you. INFPs are people that, people that worry about being rejected for who they are, or being bullied or pushed or pressured to do something they don't want to do. INFPs are people that aspire to realize the potential hidden within themselves they seek to, by finding their own purpose and identity, have and gain unique value to the tribe and society at large. Their hope is that by able to find this, by being able to embody this, they will inspire other people and trigger a shame reaction of change in the world, where people become more liberated or free in themselves and the world as a result becomes more harmonious with INFP's own strong value system. My name is Eric and I've sought to understand the 16 personality types for a real long time now. My core interest has always been INFPs. I've always found INFPs to be some of the most fascinating of all the personality types. Now what I've noticed is INFPs, they go through stages of changes and stages of growth. And today we want to talk about cocooning, INFP cocooning. What is it and what does it look like and what can you do when an INFP decides to hide themselves in a cocoon? When an INFP cannot be themselves or cannot express themselves or be completely honest with the world? First, what you want to do is you want to understand the dynamic itself. INFPs don't start out naturally self-aware, they don't begin honest, they don't start out fully knowing who they are. No type starts out as the best version of that personality type. INFPs don't start out wise, but they search for and aspire for wisdom. INFPs similarly don't start out authentic or honest or true to themselves, but they start out as people seeking authenticity, seeking honesty, and seeking to know and understand the self. What you have to understand when you're an INFP is you are the process, you are not the result. What that means is INFP don't be too hard on yourself for what you are right now. See and recognize your journey and your process and recognize that you are your intentions and your goals and that the, your goals and your intentions say more about who you are than your present state. Really, most of the time, INFPs start out as larvas. What can happen is they start out making some friends and lose connections and... Uh, getting to know people and getting to know themselves. They maybe take up a small hobby just to see how it feels. Maybe they try out a new dress style, a new wardrobe, some new changes in their lives to make sense of who they are. They try out things, they experiment, they are intuitive perceiving types. That means they are constantly testing and in particular they are feeling perceiving types. So they are constantly testing and changing themselves. They are exploring themselves from different perspectives. Is this me? Is that me? Does that fit with who I am? Does that resonate with me? What do I feel about this? And that means they are taste testers. They are people that go out and experiment. 
they jump into different hobbies and interests and passions, they explore different values, they explore different lifestyles, and they see and constantly check in with themselves. How do I feel about that? What do I like about this? When INFPs are in the larva stage, their energy is kind of half-hearted. They're going into something without really committing to it. Nothing they do is or comes with commitment. It's simply a loan. It's something they put on just to see how it feels. It's just testing it out. And often INFPs can be stuck in this stage for quite a long time. They take up some different hobbies. They show up like once a week. They try it out a bit, but they never really want to commit to it because they're not sure if it's really them. Is this really me? Do I really like this person? Do I fit in this relationship? Do I connect with these groups of people? Is this group of people going to allow me to be myself? Is this hobby going to let me express who I am? Am I able to be honest in this craft or in this workplace? And that means when INFPs are in the larva mode, what they do with their functions and with their presence is very limited. And what you see of this INFP is very limited. You might not even think much of them at all. This person is just passing by. They're just there. They're just showing up. What they say is not necessarily of great depth or insight. It is just a small question, a tremor, a test. So in this stage, you might not think much of the INFP at all. What are they for? What do they do? What are they good at? What do they represent? What can they do? Often it's a complete mystery. You haven't really seen the true INFP self when you've seen the INFP larva. The INFP will feel this themselves and that's why they will be increasingly frustrated with themselves for being unable to commit, for being unable to be consistent full on in what they do. They know and they feel that they are not being 100% real in their actions and in what they say. They know that they are not really sure. They know they're constantly doubting themselves, going back and forth, trying things out, testing it a bit, but not full on, not being 100% honest, but only 50%, sharing a little, but not all of it. So what tends to happen is this frustration tends to cause the INFP to become increasingly frustrated not just with themselves with the world around them it's that nothing really connects that relationship is not truly 100% what you want that the workplace is not 100% going to fit with your values or your interests that uh, hobby or craft is a little bit fun or a little bit interesting but not 100% what you want to do So there's an increasing frustration with the world and the system and society that doesn't allow you to be yourself. Because you feel that you know yourself, you feel that you are authentic and you feel that you want to be honest, but you feel that you cannot be through the medium you are currently using. You cannot truly express yourself in your workplace, you cannot truly speak out for yourself, you cannot truly have that deep conversation, that fantasy, that ideal that you seek in romance and in relationships. So, INFPs begin to decide to disconnect. They disconnect. They start thinking, I gotta get out of this. I gotta get away from this. I quit. I'm done. I have to get some me time. I have to really go into myself and find out what I am, what I'm meant to do, where I'm supposed to be. I'm done with all these half-hearted attempts. I'm done with all these loose circles and loose relationships, this shallowness, this uh, superficial uh, existence that I'm having right now, that I'm feeling right now. So what I do is I tune out completely. And it doesn't have to be that INFPs just ignore everything or disappear completely because a lot of time they cannot fully remove themselves from the world. No matter how frustrating it is, there are things you need to do. You still have to show up to work. You still need to earn a salary. Uh, You still don't really dare to go or leave your partner or to get out of or get away from your family because on some level you know they are important and you know that you care about them and you know that there is something there that you just can't feel yet or just cannot reach yet or experience. So you cocoon, and what that means is you wrap a blanket around yourself, you put up a wall. INFPs put up and often are perceived as people who are walled off or closed off. What that means is what you give other people is not 100%. 
When other people try to talk to you or ask you questions, you are barely responding to what they say. You barely reflect on their questions. You don't let people come in. When people are trying to connect with you, you brush it off or you deflect or you avoid it. You you d say, I don't have time right now, or I don't, I'm too tired, or I don't feel like it, or no, not, not today. And you give people just the bare minimum necessary to sustain the relationship and to avoid them from becoming upset with you. You give your workplace just the necessity. You show up on the time, but you're not really working hard. You're not pushing yourself and you're not really being there or doing or making the best out of your time there. So INFPs, they cocoon. And what they do is uh, in this stage, they seek to gain true 100% insight and answers into who they are and what they are meant to do, what their purpose is, what their core identity is, what their truth is, what their answers are to fundamental life questions. Like, do I want to keep working here? Do I want to be in this relationship? Do I want to be with these people? Do I want to connect here? Is this me? Can I be myself? And what am I truly? At some point, this is when INFPs trigger their core four flow functions. And this is when the INFP begins building energy. What you do in this stage as an INFP is you are building energy. You're vibrating. Honestly, inside, everything is happening. All the lights are beginning to light up. One by one, your brain is becoming a set of fireworks and ideas and potential. You're starting to really gain that insight. You're starting to really feel something. You're starting to really understand something. Perhaps you begin to realize just how important your partner is to you. Perhaps you begin to realize just how important your calling is. Or you begin to find some goal or some values that are truly, truly you. The cognitive functions of an INFP are introverted intuition, introverted feeling, feeling perceiving, and intuitive perceiving. That means an INFP must find balance between all these four cognitive functions in order to feel true flow and to gain full energy. What that means is they must be authentic, they must be feeling, and they must be perceiving themselves. They must be intuitive, they must change themselves constantly, try out new things, explore different sides of themselves, see themselves in new contexts and situations. They must be introverted intuitive, as in they must take the time to reflect and gain awareness and insight into who they are and into life itself. They must gain distance and perspective and take the time to sit down with themselves. And beyond that, they must respect introverted feeling. They must uh, understand their own values and their own identity primarily. It's their own identity they're trying to understand. It's their own self. It's their own actions, their own behavior, who they are, what their purpose is. Those are the flow functions of the INFP and you see this the most in the cocooning phase. That's when they are the truly the most in these functions, embodying these functions and using these functions to gain energy and to thrive. You start to gain some insights. This is, this is who I am. Wait a second, this is me. This is what I feel. This is what I want. And you know it is yours because you are completely tuned out from the world around you. Nobody else has influenced you or have been able to influence you in any way. Nothing anybody has said is there anymore. You have 100% been able to filter everything out. And you have gone inside and now you have gained that insight. And the more energy you get in this cocoon phase, the more you start desiring to break free and to release yourself. From that shell, from that comfort blanket, from those walls, you start to really vibrate and you start getting this lust to go out and try this. Maybe that is what I'm meant to do. Maybe that passion, maybe that workplace, maybe that career. You start feeling like, oh, I want to get loose, I want to get loose. But it can take some time before you truly let yourself go. Sometimes you go immediately and sometimes it will be that you really let yourself become completely sure. You really take your time, you really steal yourself. Not yet, not yet, not yet. I still want to think a little bit more. I still want to light up some more lamps. I still want to get some more energy. And suddenly you break out as a butterfly. 
And what you do is, what happens here, the INFP shifts drastically in who they are and how they act from the first stage. If in the first stage they were kind of gray or dull, if in the first stage they were kind of there or a little bit engaged but not really fully, this stage is marked by extreme energy and inspiration. This INFP is colorful, vivid, bright, and truly 100% themselves. Honest, radically honest about who they are and what they feel. They open up completely to their partner. They have deep conversations. They have meaningful connections. They are fully themselves and fascinatingly so themselves. And this is the INFP that I'm most curious about. This is the INFP I think everybody is really in love with you know everybody will love this line of p or hate them perhaps depending on your perspective because they are just radical individualists some line of peace might describe the stage as extroverted but that's not necessarily the case you are still being self-oriented not self or selfless you're still focused on expressing who you are you're still talking and sharing your own thoughts, your own feelings, your own values. So you are truly pulling out all the energy, the ideas, the insight you've gathered. You are expressing your inner world that you have filled up. And so you're not extroverted at all. You're simply taking out and sharing your inner world. You are being an introvert in an extroverted environment. You are ready to place yourself in a system or in a society that might reject you. You're ready to share and be vulnerable with yourself to a world that might think and have opinions about you. And uh, that takes tremendous courage and strength, but also a lot of energy. The thing is, this butterfly stage is not permanent, and uh, INFPs, they are creatures of change. They need constant shifts, reframing, and they need to recharge their batteries. So what happens is, if the INFP goes on too far in this form, is they start losing their color. color. The more they become part of the world, the existing world, the norms, the control, the rules, the limitations of their workplace, of other people's expectations, of duties, of chores, of things you have to do, the more they become washed out and the more they start feeling grey and tired and bored and understimulated and empty in what they do. So they experience a kind of creative burnout when they don't have anything more left inside to share anymore. They don't have any new theories or insights. They don't have any new feelings or values. They don't know themselves. They have shared everything about themselves already that is there to share. And everything else is hidden within and still has to be digged out. So, INFPs start over. They die briefly. And then they reform themselves as larvae and they begin this process of change once more. So cocooning is going to be a natural part of your INFP life. You're not always going to be happy, energetic and fully in flow, fully passionate, fully 100% yourself. You're not always going to be feeling grey or bored or drained or depressed. None of these things are going to be consistent in your life. These things are going to be constantly changing and evolving. Now what you will notice is uh, the more mature you become and the more self-aware you become, the better you will be at managing these shifts and it will no longer feel as dramatic as it did when you perhaps were a teenager. Perhaps when we're teenagers it can feel like that stage of death is something horrid or unavoidable and that you're done there's nothing more you've hit the wall it's all over it's all gone you have nothing left inside you anymore no more energy to share nothing left to give but there is always more <laughs> there is always something left and uh, the inner world is infinite in terms of creativity and potential you have a lot more to give 
all you have to do is begin to reconnect. So when you are in the larva stage, what you want to do is embrace this process. Don't be afraid of corruption. Go out, try things out, see how they feel. Go put yourself out there. The only way to know for sure is to try. Try things out. If you're not sure what you want, if you're not sure who you like, if you're not sure who to date, go on speed dating. Try out different workplaces, experiment with different studies, feel things out, see how they feel. And then just follow this process for as long as you need. And when you're done with that, when you're done with the shallowness of it, when you're tired of it, take a step back and gather yourself. What did I really feel? What did I really think? What did I really want? What did I really like? What did I really dislike? What was really me in these things? What did I connect with? What did I feel disconnected from? Take that time to introspect and gain insight and cocoon up. Because being a cocoon is uh, being 100% committed to your own health and your own self-care. In this process, you should not be hard on yourself. You should not be telling yourself, I need to get out or I shouldn't do this or this is not right. You shouldn't be afraid of uh, wrapping yourself in a soft blanket once in a while or listening to Netflix or just tuning out or completely or go meditating or uh, enjoying good foods or just being by yourself or going into the forest uh, by your own self just doing something for yourself engage in self-care put on a spa wonder mask you know do whatever for yourself and give yourself the time necessary because this is the stage of processing and brilliance. Because this is the stage that makes you brilliant. This is the stage where you gain color and energy and motivation and passion. If you don't allow yourself this stage, you're going to become a shadow of a person. And this is also true to INFP friends and family members. You know, people who are friends of INFPs. You have to let this person go into themselves and give them space and room. And you have to recognize that they need it to uh, unlock their own magic. Now, if you're an INFP and you're looking for inspiration, I can really recommend Lainey Taylor's Strange the Dreamer. I think it's a wonderful book. It's a book about Laszlo Strange, war orphan and junior librarian. She writes that the dream chooses the dreamer, not the other way around. He has always feared that his dream shows him poorly. Since he was five years old, he was obsessed with finding a mythical lost city. But he was not bold enough. He was not good enough to find the city. He was such a coward. He didn't deserve this place. But opportunities came to present themselves to him and put him in just the right stage, just the right time, just the right moment to be this person and to become this person and this is a book about mystery and philosophy and finding yourself and discovering who you are and being bold enough in yourself to be who you are to the outer world as well as yourself because it's not 100% honest if you cannot also be 100% honest on the outside at least that's my point of view. Let me know what experiences you have as INFPs about cocooning. And, or if you're a friend or family member of an INFP, how do you feel about cocooning? What do you do when an INFP cocoons? And how do you think an INFP can be better at setting boundaries and expressing themselves and taking this time for themselves? Can you respect this in an INFP or what do you think about it? Thanks for watching everyone and see you all in the next video.